For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen, the love of God is that he tells us through the scriptures, go in all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. And he arose again the third day by the power of the Father, according to the Scriptures. That's the Gospel. The Gospel is, for the reason of Jesus Christ, is that we are sinners. And because you are sinners, you will die. The Bible says, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The very fact that God loved us enough to send His Son is to show that we have a need of God, a need of salvation that we cannot meet ourselves. The love of God is He sees that we're going to die. He sees that we'll be going into a place called hell unless we believe on His Son, unless He had provided us a way to get out of hell. And the way to get out of hell is the Lord Jesus Christ. Sin began in a garden like these fruits here at the fruit market. God told Adam, do not eat of that fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And yet Adam disobeyed God. And we are in sin. We are in death. We are in a place going to hell. John chapter 3 says, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through Him might be saved. He that believes on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Listen, if you have never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you are in hell. Your body hasn't caught up yet. If you are saved, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, you are seated before the throne, your body hasn't made it yet. Your body is going to die. You either going to go to glory, go to heaven by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, or you're going to go to body hell by anything but Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That rules out religion. That rules what you think. I don't care what you think. God doesn't care what you think. It's what the Bible says. The Bible says you must be born again. You must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And that is the message that we bring to you. With a Bible, Scripture, that death is coming. It may be even today. Now is the day of salvation. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that you must believe in Him, yet God's giving you a free will to choose. Jesus tells us that hell was made for Satan and his angels. And yet man in his disobedience and rejection of Jesus Christ will be cast into hell to pay for your sins, which Christ has already paid for. The payment that the Holy God has for sin has been paid and met by Jesus Christ. If you die and go into hell and pay for your own sins, you are a fool. Because Christ already took the payment. Christ has already taken the wrath of God for you. You just got to receive it. If I were to tell you, go down to this bank, and in this bank is a check to pay for all your bills, and yet you just have to go and sign that check, that's what God says. Your sins have been paid. You just got to come to 
my son and believe on him. But who wants to think of death? Everyone that's in the graveyard today that's burning in hell. The Bible says that those that are in hell right now are saying, Preacher, preach to my family. I don't want them to come here. Luke. The Gospel of Luke. Well, I'm here to buy fruit. You're here to hear the Gospel. I'm here to watch the races. They never go right. They always go left. The right way is Jesus Christ. If you're fooled by a bunch of people going around with a circle track that says, Oh, we're Christians and skip out on church on Sunday morning, you're a fool. They gather together the first day of the week. Salvation is wrought in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Your religion can't do anything. Your thoughts can't do anything. Only Christ Jesus is the means for salvation that after you die to go to heaven. You will not see Peter at the pearly gates. You will not walk up to God and say, Hey, how good I am, because the Bible says there is none good, no, not one. There is none righteous. You've got to have the righteousness of Jesus Christ to get to heaven. And that is in faith and belief of what the Word says. The Word says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So getting back to the garden, where God told Adam, Don't take that fruit. And he did. He rebelled against God, and this is the consequence. And yet, I am telling you what God expects from you by the Bible, and things have not changed because you are not doing what God has told you to do. Adam did what God told him not to do. You are not doing what God told you to do. And what God's told you to do is Acts 16.31, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That simple. Your Pope, Mary, your race car driver, your money cannot get you to God. Pretending there is no God is not going to exempt you from be, be before that God. But he that believes on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he has not believed the name of the only begotten Son of God. That name, that salvation name is Jesus Christ, a, a name above all names that every knee shall bow before. There is no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. Saved from what? H-E-L-L, hell. There is a hell according to God the Creator. Just because you don't believe it, then why do you tell people to go to hell in a place you don't believe in? We tell you not to go to hell by the Bible, by Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ is no good, then why do you cuss His name? When you crack your knuckles, say, Ah, Buddha, damn it! Say, Allah, Christ! No, you cuss the name of God's Son, the very salvation, with the name you cussed in. You never say, Allah, damn it. Allah ain't nobody. Allah is the angel of light, Satan himself. Allah can't save you. Mary can't save you. Joseph Smith can't save you. Mary Baker Eddy has not made no phone calls. But Jesus Christ reaches out to the Holy Spirit through men like me in the Bible to tell you, to speak to you that Jesus saves 
and only Jesus saves. 2017, the Bible is still speaking. The Bible is still alive. And you folks here, by your rejection, you prove the Bible because the Bible speaks about you rejecting and not giving heed. Condemnation for those who do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the combination that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. You are evil. You are wicked. You stand as a sinner before the holy God that said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And you're not holy. If you do not have the righteousness of Jesus Christ, you are not holy. You are full of baloney and going to hell. And you tell your priest, you tell your rabbi, and you tell your pastor without the blood of Jesus Christ, this preacher man says, I'm going to hell. The salvation is wrought by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. There is no other. Jesus means Jehovah saves. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. You, don't, you do not want your life to be shown because it's in wickedness, it's in sin, but God one day is going to judge you by your secrets to Jesus Christ. Everything that people don't know about you will be known about you at the great white throne judgment. As God will tell you, go jump into the lake of fire that burneth forever. And yet the Bible says, the Lord, didn't we do this in your name? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Great, great work. Keep preaching the gospel, brother. Imagine God the Father telling you to go to hell. Imagine Jesus Christ telling you to go jump into the lake, which would be the lake of fire which burns forever, Revelation 20. And he will tell you without believing in Jesus Christ, go to hell. Without your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, go jump into the lake. And God would be righteous for telling you so, because His love, preach love, preach love, His love is Jesus Christ that He sent Him, that He may die for your sins, that you may believe what you are rejecting. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, because I have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yea, though I walk to the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because I've got Christ's righteousness. Some of you came here, hey, let's check out the farmer's market. Let's get some grapefruit. Let's get some watermelon. And yet, I never expected to hear of the Bible. And that's the love of God that you are hearing the Bible. That guy is so loud. Amen. God's given me a voice that multitudes can hear. Jesus would never do that. You don't know your Bible. So don't come up to me and say, Jesus wouldn't do that. You just put question that you're a non-Bible reader. For that, he that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. You want to go to heaven? You come to the Son. You want to go to heaven? You come to the Son. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. You come to Jesus Christ to go to heaven. I said you go to heaven by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son 
shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding on him. Well, preacher, I don't want to believe in Jesus. Then you get the wrath of God. The wrath of God is hell. And if you don't want Jesus Christ, enjoy the coldness of Florida today, because if you were to die, you will enter into extreme heat that never goes away, where there's no air conditioning, no water, no relief, and the devil's hell that burns forever. And you can't drink alcohol in hell because alcohol evaporates and burns up with hell. And your friends will not have anything to do with you because as you're in torment, they're being tormented. They're not going to want to bother with you. And then while you're in hell, the Bible says you're going to want people like me to come to your family and tell them about Jesus Christ. If there's one family reunion that people don't want, then they don't want you as their family coming to a place called hell. Read it. It's in the Bible. Gospel of Luke. Give you find a concordance. Look it up online. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm not going to do all the work for you. We'll let you do a little studying. But salvation is wrought in Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ alone. There is no other. Religion is man-made. Jesus Christ is God-approved. And the only entrance to get to God the Father is by the blood, the sinless blood of Jesus Christ without spot. The Lamb of God must take away the sin of the world. You have got a sin condition. Your sin, the wages of the sin is death, is going to cause you to die. In order to come before God, you've got to have your sin removed like a cancer. And the only operation, the only surgery to remove sin is Jesus Christ. And the Word of God, which is the sword. Religion cannot remove sin, it adds more sin. Because as you do religion, you are disobeying God. And disobeying God is a sin. And yet, all have sin. All. Everyone. Were you born of a woman? Then you're a sinner. In the eyes of God, you've got to take care of your sin, and that sin will be taken care of properly, rightfully, by Jesus Christ. God's judgment does not take cash or credit cards. It takes blood. The blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Now, Muslims have it wrong. Muslims say, take people, infidels, and slay their blood. That's religion. Catholics have killed Christians. Slaying the blood. That's religion. Christianity is Jesus Christ shed his sinless blood. His blood, which is God's blood, Acts 20:28. 20, That's the difference between Christianity and religion. Religion sheds blood, Christianity, Christ gave his blood, that you might have life, and have life more abundant. This is what the Bible says. This is not what man has to say. I am quoting from you from the scriptures. The scriptures say, ye must be born again. The scriptures say, ye must believe on Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. The scriptures say, without Jesus Christ, you are condemned. Without Jesus Christ, you will be put to the wrath of God. And yet the scriptures say, if you believe on Him, you'll have eternal life. 
And there's no free ways about it. There is Jesus Christ for salvation, and there's anything else for damnation. That's it. That's the Bible. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You gotta say one thing about God. God is very narrow minded when it comes to salvation. God said Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. That's it. Now Satan will lie to you with anything and everything else but Jesus Christ. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to scripture. That's Calvary's hill. That's Calvary's cross. God's blood was shed for our sins. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world upon Calvary's hill. According to the scripture. And they buried him. As you would any dead man. And he saw no corruption. He did not begin to, to decay. In that grave, three days later, that rock was rolled away. The original rock and roll was Jesus Christ, the rock that we stand upon. And we know what Satan's rock and roll represents. I won't say it because there's children here, but we know what Satan's rock and roll is. But I'll tell you what God's rock and roll is. Salvation was wrought from that empty tomb. When that rock rolled away, that rock and roll rolled away, that is Christianity. Jesus Christ came out of the grave alive and well and is seated at the right hand of the Father today. Try that for a pope. Try that for Muhammad. Try that for Buddha. No! They're still dead in the ground, but Jesus Christ is alive and seated at the right hand of the Father right now. Now you may not be pleased with this message, but I'll tell you what God feels. How God has. Let's see what God has to say. Shall we? Alright, Romans chapter 10. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall I call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good news. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, as I'm doing now, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Are you Christians? Any Christians out there? Why ain't you confessing them? I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of salvation, Paul says, in the scripture. True Christianity would make you not to shut up. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believes in him should not be ashamed. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? John chapter 3, the wrath of God. What's the wrath of God? It's hell. God will throw you into hell if you reject Jesus Christ. It's plain and simple. The holy God righteousness is of Jesus Christ and nothing else. And since 
over here too. Mark 16. Mark chapter 16. Kind of hard to turn the pages with the wind, so bear with me a little bit. If I turn to Mark 16, listen, the love of God is right before you right now. It's not me. It's the book that I hold, the love of God. I'm just being obedient. Mark 16, 15, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's the love of God. Go in all the world and tell them, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The power of God of salvation is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Without Jesus Christ, your eternal life would be hell. And joke is, is, hell is not a joke because God saw the need, God saw the torments of hell, and Jesus Christ was whipped, was beaten, was abused because of our sins. It is so serious, hell, and the reaction of God's love to us, and the rejection of you that God will cast you in a place that you do not have to go. As you hear the word of the gospel today, you are without excuse. You cannot tell God, I never knew, because I've told you what God expects from you. So keep walking, keep buying, act like you never knew, act like the Word of God ain't nothing, and one day you'll stand before God, sorry that you did not adhere to what God says. Why don't you just take for a moment, what if this Bible is right? What if the Bible's right and you are wrong? Well, we don't want to think about that. And if the Bible's right, you will burn in hell without Jesus. And you'll never get out. Forget a first, second, third degree burns, quadrillion degree burn. From head to toe, and outside and inside, burning. No relief. No medication. No drugs. No alcohol. And you'll be with your father, Satan, John 8, 44. You'll be with your father, Satan, as he rejoices you're with him for all eternity. Isaiah 53. I'm having fun. I don't know about you, but I'm having fun. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I love the Word of God. I love preaching. Who has believed our report? I have. You haven't. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? To you. I am telling you about the Messiah. I am telling you about salvation. You've heard. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So when you see the pictures of Jesus, that's not the picture of Jesus. I forget the guy's name, but it's Caesar something. That guy was involved, the picture you see of Jesus today, that guy was involved in orgies. 
That's not the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says if you were to see Jesus when he came on this planet, you'd... he's a Jew. That's a big nose, brown skin. Jesus does not look American or Hollywoodian. The Bible says that the look of Jesus Christ would not impress you. Isaiah 15. He is despised and rejected of men. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. You prove Isaiah 53, verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men. That's you. You are right now rejecting Jesus Christ, and you are found in Isaiah 53, 3. Thank you. The Bible's real by you. A man of sorrows, Jesus wept, and acquainted with grief, and we hid as, our, as we were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. You're not esteeming him, unless you bang your hand and curse, cry out, Jesus Christ, in a curse. That's the only time you think about Jesus, as a cuss. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Jesus Christ was beaten by God, the wrath of God, for you. The torture and damnation of hell that we deserve was put upon Jesus Christ that you may have eternal life. Now, Jesus Christ doesn't pay for your sins. You will pay for your sins. And the Bible, I mean, the court of the United States calls that double jeopardy. Double jeopardy is you cannot be tried again for the same crime. And if you were to put your sins on Jesus Christ, God cannot try you again for your sins because they have already been tried upon Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ paid for your sins. And yet, if you do not want to believe on Him as paying for your sins, you will pay for your own sins that you do not need to in hell, and that payment for sins is eternal fire. It's come now to Jesus Christ and be saved or pay for it yourself and burn. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we are healed. Now if you reject Jesus Christ, what happened to Jesus Christ cannot be applied to your life, and you're going to have to pay for it. Why pay for something that's already been paid? All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. And was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Jesus did not seek legal counsel. He did not ask for a lawyer as a Jew. He stood before Pilate sinless. As Pilate declared Jesus Christ without any guilt. I find no fault in him three times. Herod found no fault in Jesus Christ once. Judas went to the priest and said, I have betrayed the innocent blood. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. He was killed. From the transgression of my people was he stricken. He made his grave with the wicked. 
with the rich his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. And yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. If it pleased God for Jesus Christ to take our sin and punishment, it will please God that he will cast you in hell by rejecting what his son has done for you. But right now, as you're living, it wouldn't please God, because God's Bible says God is not willing that any should perish. That God is long-suffering, and He wants you to be saved. He wants you to come to Jesus Christ for salvation. But if you were to die without Jesus Christ, hearing the gospel today, if you die without Jesus Christ, God would be pleased to cast you into hell because you heard about His righteous Son. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And what must you do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. By hearing the word. Step forth, come on. If you want to be saved, come on. I'll turn this stuff off. I'll open a Bible with you. And we will get together with God for your soul. And the Bible speaks about that too, Isaiah chapter 1. Notice I'm, I'm quoting from the scriptures. If you want to, you can come over here. I'll give you my card with my YouTube and my uh, Facebook. You can go and get a copy of this message and check the scriptures out. I challenge you to. I could be lying to you, but God won't. I said I could be lying to you, but God won't. So when God won't lie to you, I'll use the scriptures. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. That's God speaking. He's speaking to you. He's saying, come on right now. You see, we're all going to die. But we don't know when we're going to die. And God says, come now, because you may not have later. I've been down here, I don't know how many years in Daytona, and every time they have a, a race at that race, there's always car parts that end in the fans. You might be sitting in one of those seats right now and get yourself a camshaft in your face and die and end up in hell where you can believe now. I heard the gospel Saturday morning and got killed by a race car Saturday night. And all I had to do was listen to obey. Matter of fact, that preacher, man, said, come now. That preacher had an invitation service on a street corner. That preacher told me through the Bible what I'm supposed to do. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be white as wool. You don't realize that what's happening before your ears right now, at Daytona Beach, Florida, City Island Road at the farmer's market you don't realize that the, the love of God is being portrayed out to you right now through the word of God 
The love of God is that God sends preachers out to tell you what He has to say. Because you won't be in church tomorrow morning. You're not going to read the Bible. And if you either turn the TV or radio on, you ain't going to get the Bible. With radio and TV, you'll probably get 1% somebody good with a good Bible on the radio or TV. So God said, while you're about buying and commercing, I'm going to send wisdom into the street. And that wisdom is going to preach about my son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to be saved. You say, you're full of it. Okay, Proverbs chapter 1. I'm glad you said you're full of it. I like reading the Bible out loud. I like showing you people what the Bible says. Keep saying things like that. I'll keep on preaching. I love it. All right, let me just find it. Proverbs chapter 1. Wisdom cries without. She utters her voice in the streets. Hey, <laughs> God cares what I'm doing, wisdom. She crieth in the chief places of concourse. Sound familiar? In the opens of the gates. In the city she uttered her word, saying, How wrong ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? Hey, simple people! Come and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's simple. Even you can do it. Come on, little child. That little child, come. We'll show you how to believe on Jesus Christ. Come. And the scorners delight in their scorning. We've had those here. Show me peace. Show me peace. Show me peace. I tried to show him peace and he ran off. Scorners. And fools hate knowledge. You know, with you not listening to what God's being preached right now, God just called you a fool. Because if you would hear to the knowledge that's being preached to you, you'd be all lining up right now to know what Jesus had to say and what to do. I got a scriptural verse for that too. Broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many will go that way. And few that enter into straight gate. As far as this ministry of the farmer's market, this should be called the broad way. Because many of you are going to go still into hell without adhering to God. You're either a fool or you're a scorner. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make known my words unto you. That's exactly what I'm doing. Look, I'm reading from the Bible. I am trying to show you what God expects. Proverbs chapter 1. Because I have cried, ye refuse. That's exactly what you're doing. People, you're in Proverbs 1.24. Did you know that? Step out of Proverbs 1.24 and come to Acts 16.31 to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You didn't know you were in the Bible, did you? Because I have called, ye refuse. I have stretched out my hand, no, re no man regarded. Remember Isaiah 53, I stretched out my arm. Proverbs 1.24, I have stretched out my hand. You know what happens when God stretches out His hand? You see a hole. You see the hole in God's hand where He was nailed to that cross for your sins. Yes, Jesus Christ still bears the wounds in His body for you. But ye have set at naught all my counsel. You would none my reproof. I ought to write the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market right there. 
You want to sit at naught means? It means exactly what you're doing. Nothing to get saved. What you're trying to do is you're trying to ignore me in the Bible. That's why God has blessed me with a wonderful voice that irritated my mother all my life. I also will laugh at your calamity. That's God speaking. That's the God of love. Since you reject Jesus Christ, God will laugh at your calamity. That's the God of love. Proverbs 1, 26. I will mock when your fear cometh. When you reject Jesus Christ and you stand at the great white throne judgment, God's going to laugh at you. He's going to mock you. I can imagine God pulling a rosary out and saying, Oh, yeah, this is really going to help. <laughs> Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Rosaries don't work. Candles can't do it. Money can't buy salvation. And when your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they shall call upon me, and I will not answer. That's a horrifying fact. As we preach the gospel, you may reject God so much, so many times, that that time you say, well, God, I'm coming to you. And God say, no, I'm not going to listen no more. Maybe some of you vendors here, I have sent that man week after week after week to despise weather and, and work and, and health concerns like that. I tried to send him week after week after week, and he preaches the same thing week after week after week. You may get to the point God says, no, I'm not going to listen. Time's up. That's the holy, loving God. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 27. Listen, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, this may be the only chance you got for salvation. I don't know. I'm not a psychic with a, with a uh, storefront that says closed. Then they shall call upon me, and I will, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but shall not find me. For they hated knowledge. They hated knowledge. You hate the Word of God. You hate Jesus. Proverbs chapter 129. Because if you didn't hate God, if you didn't hate Jesus, you didn't hate the Bible, you'd be here right now on your knees re repenting and getting right by Jesus Christ. By putting your sins through the blood of Jesus, that you may be cleansed, that you may be saved. I'm reading from Proverbs chapter 1, 29. And did not choose to fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. They would none of my counsel. You will not listen to the preacher preach. They despise all my reproof. That's exactly what you guys are doing right now. You despise the Word of God. And yet God is able to send me continually with the Word. That you may know and believe that Jesus Christ saves and Jesus Christ alone saves. Oh, yeah, right. For the turning away the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whosoever hearkens unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. You can either reject 
But why doesn't God take care of the poor? He said you'll have the poor always with you. It's because you're a sinner. It's because you don't know how to spend your money. It's because you're wasteful with your money. Because you will not come to God with your money. You won't do right because you're born in sin. You're born in iniquity. That's why there's poorness. You expect God to help the poor and you won't even come to Him for salvation. The wages of sin is death. You know you're going to die. That's why you bought life insurance. Why do they call it life insurance? Because they know you're going to have eternal life after death. The Bible says there is life after death. It's heaven or hell. In order to get life insurance, in order to get eternal life to be with God, you've got to come to Jesus Christ. He paid the premium through the wrath of God upon Him, through His bruises, through His stripes, through His blood, there's salvation. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you, you must be saved. You must be born again. And that is through Jesus Christ. You will die. You will face God. And what you do before you die will depend on your eternal hope or damnation. Again, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. He that believes in the Son shall have a... He, uh, let me, John 3. I'm going to mess that one up. See, when I say I'm going to mess it up, I'll go right to the page. John 3. 36. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. There's a heaven. And there's a hell. There's eternal life. And it's wrought by the finished work of Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I love when children just stare at me and listen. Get it in their little hearts. I have showed you people where you are in the Bible today. Proverbs 1, Isaiah 53. I have shown you to be fools for rejecting Jesus Christ. I have shown that you prove to me that the Bible is right and, and real. By you despising the Bible, you prove to me the Bible is real. So if someone would come up to me somewhere on the Walmart or somewhere and say, Brother Hayward, how do you know the Bible's right? Daytona Beach Farmer's Market. What are you talking about? Because I read about people despising God. I read about people who reject God. I will read about people going to hell by hearing the Word of God and not doing it. And I also will get people within my lifetime, this already happened, I will get people that will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And those people are very few and minor compared to people who will reject God. And the Bible says, broad is the way that you people will go to hell. And maybe some of you, few of you, will come through the straight gate. And some of you may be thinking, well... 
That guy, he doesn't have a crowd of people. He doesn't have a mass of people. He's only got three people. And yet the Bible speaks about the minority. Of the minority is are those that are saved. You don't see big crowds doing right by Jesus. I see big crowds, crowds trying to get something from Jesus, but I don't see many coming to Jesus for salvation. The Bible speaks that the wages of sin is death. You're going to die because you're a sinner. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. To get to heaven is by Jesus and Jesus alone. And I know you're hearing because I look at your face and you look at Boy, that guy's a fruitcake. And yet what I'm doing is biblical. And what you're doing is biblical too. You're either rejecting or you're going to receive Christ. That's biblical. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I'm holding out reservations to heaven. I am offering you right now a ticket to heaven. And that ticket to get to heaven is free. That ticket to heaven has been paid by the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And the way to start to get that ticket is you've got to come to Calvary's cross. you got to come to Calvary as a sinner. And you've got to look at the Son of God saying, up there on that tree, nailed to that tree, bleeding and dying. That was because of my sins, Isaiah 53. You got to kneel down at that cross and say, Jesus, I am sorry for putting you there. I repent of what I am that you are dying on that cross for me. If it wasn't for me and my sins, you would not be on that tree. You would never even have to come. And when you leave that cross, you step over to the tomb where he lies. There's a stone. And you just sit there and wait. And then the stone is rolled away three days later. And out comes the living Savior. Out comes the victory over death and hell. Here comes the way out of death. No more sting of death. By the resurrected Jesus Christ who is now seated at the right hand of the Father. And thou shalt believe the Lord Jesus, thou shalt be saved. See, you will die and you will go somewhere one day. And not just a hole in the ground. See, everyone that has died since Adam, they're still living. And they are now in one of two places. Now those that you know that are truly in heaven by Jesus Christ are saying, Come, come, will you listen to Him? Will you get right by Him? This is the place you want to come. 
And those that you know who are in hell today are saying, will you listen to them and go get out of this place? Listen to what that man's telling you. He's telling you right. Don't come to hell. The ones that are in heaven are saying, come. The angels rejoice at one man that repents. And the men in hell say, don't come here. It's a lie about the partying. It's a lie about the drinking. It's a lie about the friendship in hell. Hell, the Bible describes by the one that made it as torment. It was made for Satan and his angels, but because man went the way of Satan, you and your sins will take you into hell where Christ died and was suffered for our sins that we may have eternal life. And you have to believe on him to get out of hell into heaven by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And to qualify as a sinner is to be born of a woman. That's your qualification. No animal fits that qualification. Forget saving the whales and the platypuses and get your soul saved by Jesus Christ. God said that you need to be born again. You must be born again. As far as animals, you can enjoy and eat. That's what he told Noah. He said, go ahead and, and have the barbecues. And yes, in the church age, under grace, you can have pork and shellfish and all kinds of things, and praise God for it. But in order to be saved, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be born again. Quite people don't know like that. It's ironic that the Lord has brought me to Genesis chapter 2 and 3 here at the farmer's market. We don't know what that fruit was. But Adam and Eve taking that fruit has brought you to the place that you got to take Jesus now. And you don't eat him. And you don't drink Jesus. Let me say that. See, Adam and Eve ate something to sin. You've got to receive Jesus Christ, not eat him, to be saved. Let me add that one. Salvation of God through Jesus Christ is not to be taken orally. It's to be taken by faith. I said, I don't know what more I can do, what more I can plead, but what the Bible says, you need to be saved. There is a hell. That's why you need to be saved. There's a hell. If there was no hell, then we would not have need of Jesus Christ. Think about that. If there was no hell, no, why would we even need a Bible? Again, Adam. There was no hell for Adam, and God would walk up and spend the afternoon with him. But because man sinned against God, we have a Bible. Man sinned against God, we have a Savior. And that savor comes by your choice. It's your choice to be saved. And yet that choice is your eternal aspect. That choice is what relies for eternity. Making the wrong choice is condemnation, damnation, the wrath of God. There is no time in eternity. There is no clocks. There's no 
describing the suffering you will have in hell. And you do not need to. You don't know that one of these days you're going to stand before God and you're going to have to thank me for telling you what God's told you to do before God condemns you into the lake of fire. Because I know what words you're going to say at, the, at that great white throne judgment. Oh God, I never knew. And then God's going to bring up this loud mouth preacher and say, He told you week after week after week. That guy was obedient to my word. Why weren't you obedient to the word? Kind of weird to think that maybe a possibility I'm going to show up to your great white throne judgment to give a testimony of your damnation when I'm trying to preach your salvation. Hopefully someone, one of you have gotten saved. And we can rejoice in glory forever. But most of you, the Bible says, you will not. And the books will be open. And if your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you will suffer the wrath of God, the lake of fire. And you'll never get out. I mean, if you've got an ache or pain today, take it 200 times more than what it is right now and never have relief. There may be a pharmacist in hell, but he can't help you. There may be doctors in hell, but they can't help you. And yet, if you've got a pharmacist in heaven, you won't need him. If you've got a doctor in heaven, you won't need his services. There's one place you, you wish you had the services, and there's one place you won't need the services. And yet the thing is, when you go into hell, you don't have to. You believe on Jesus today, now. Jesus Christ, the faith and belief, will get you out of the place of the wrath of God called hell. Got a door open. The way to heaven is through Calvary. The way to hell is just keep on going the way you're going. Don't change. But I advise you to change. I advise you to come to Jesus Christ. Listen, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. I wouldn't care if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, we'd probably be just shopping like you are. And not caring. And some of you, well, you know, the love of God, the love of God, we're telling you what God wants from you. We're telling you that God has demanded no free offering that you believe on Jesus Christ to save your soul. What, 
What greater love? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Well, there's one thing you do know, death is coming. What you don't want to believe is so is hell. And the Bible says that death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. And the way to escape hell is through Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You've got to have that sin taken care of. And the only way is through the blood of Jesus Christ without spot. The perfect sacrifice, the righteous sacrifice, is lied in the man Christ Jesus. God approved. The Son of God which take away the sin of the world. You get the Son of God to take away your sin, then you can go to heaven. But if you will not believe in the Lamb of God, you will not trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. You're not going to heaven. Don't come to me if you don't have Jesus Christ and say, well, I'm going to heaven because the Bible says you're not. I don't care what your priest, I don't care what your pastor, and what the Bible says. Salvation is wrought by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. The Bible says that people will stand before Jesus and say, Well, then I do this in your name. And Jesus will say, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Some of you think you're doing right and you're not. You've been deceived by self and you've been deceived by Satan. And you're not going to like having the fact is you think you're doing good and have Jesus Christ rebuke you into the flames of hell forever. I look at you people and I see you most miserable. And I lift up prayer. Some of you are going to ignorantly go into a place where you don't belong. You don't have to go. Some of you are going to go into hell thinking that you're doing right now is okay and it's not. And most of you are going to go into hell just by, hey, I'm not going to believe what that guy says or anything. And yet, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. Don't perish. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. I wish 
second for you. I wish I could say, just say these words and you'd be saved. I'd be a fool. I wish I could do something. The only thing I can do is just preach the word. This is your choice. Would you like to burn forever or would you like to have pleasure? Oh, I know you like to have pleasure. America's pleasure. But you don't want godly, holy pleasure. You know, any time the Lord Jesus Christ can come for His bride. You can be part of that assembly. You can be part of the church. You can be saved and go to heaven. You don't have to go to hell. You can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Believe on Him now.